Yo, Rana, and welcome to FM Tahiti. I hope you're all doing well. Um, so we've made it to our first game in charge of the Tahiti Societies, and we're playing against Tuamotis in the very first leg of the World Club Oceana Qualifying Section Group A. I don't know why it's called Group A, because it is just the final two games, really. Um, but we're here. So I think the only thing that's happened between now and the last episode was we played the Takaro Terrors in the league and we lost 3-0, which was a bit painful. I guess my mind was on other things, but I'm putting it down to. Uh, so approaching our very first game, I, I do love the the bio feature. That I think the version of FM that that got put in was amazing. It really changed the way I looked at things just because I like looking back and seeing how well things have been going or how badly they've been going. There's a few trophies here and there, a couple of Atoll Championships. Um, so let me show you the team. We'll do the press conference and then we'll do the very first leg. So we've got a 23-man squad, which is pretty, pretty standard. Um, and there are a few names here. If you've been following the series, you'll remember. If you've joined us a little bit later or you've not been paying full attention, that's fine. Don't worry, we'll go through them in a second. Um, we've got a bit of a spread. Of teams, there's a lot coming from the humpbacks, uh, quite a few from Ace Chance, Taha, a couple from Moria, um, a couple from the Eels as well, and then I think beyond that, it's teams outside of well, it's teams in Saudi Arabia, it's Al Fateh and Al Riyadh. Um, if we look at the values as well, Jan Andre at 3.2 million, Pons at 1.7, so we had both of them when we were at the humpbacks. And then all the way down here to René Dupuis, who is getting, well, who's worth just over £500. And De Freitas, who's worth just under a grand. But this team's worth a lot more than our Austral Island side. And pretty much, our, well, even just one or two of these players are probably worth more than our entire Tertengeki wing side. So it's quite a good squad. Keeper-wise, we've got Killian Rousset, who plays for the Humpbacks. Attribute-wise, he looks good. He would walk into our Turton Geggy wing side. It's just worth shy of 500,000. He's, he's not actually... Well, no, sorry. I was going to say he's not got any caps, so I was looking at the wrong bit. He's got 48 caps for the senior squad, so he's probably going to be our first choice. Then we've got Mikhail uh, Valetti, who's got no caps, only one um, under-20s cap. But he looks like he might be okay. He's probably not going to see much action unless something goes horribly wrong. Likewise, Anthony Fritch, he's 16 year old, looks pretty decent. He's rated really highly. He's got quite a big value as well for his for his age. And again, something horrible is going to have to happen to Killian Reset for them to get in. Uh, he's six or two there. Uh, right back, we've got Jean Christophe Hummer, who plays for Ace Chance. Again, he's got about 40 odd caps. He would waltz into pretty much any side. He'd waltz into pretty much any of the Polynesian national sides apart from the Austral Islands where we had uh, Porter as our really good right back. I think Porter's the only player who's better than any of the options we've got here. And again, he obviously he plays for the Austral Islands. He's not going to play for us. We've got Bryce Rush, um, 12 caps, which would be a good backup. We got into a bit of trouble with the fans for dropping certain players because there's actually quite a good pool of players. It was difficult, especially in defence, to work out who we're going to take. Uh, on the left, we've got Stephen Tibbet or Thibault. Um No caps yet. Ready Dupuy, no caps yet as well. So this is probably where we've got the kind of weaker side. We've got Patrice David as well. You could probably play there if we need him to. Um, it's not really his natural position. But, uh, we've also got Vincent Onu, who we might play there as well. Again, we'll have to see. I'm, I'm tempted to play him there, because although he's more at home in the centre, he looks decent. He's got 10 caps as well, even though he's only 17. In the middle, we've got... Avery Mara from the Humpbacks, again, 40-odd caps. Luca Dennis for the Humpbacks. He looks really good, to be honest. I think he's a really good good player. Six for one as well. Uh, Diego Gutz, um, who is from the Ace Chance Youth Academy. Six one. Looks 
looks like a really good player. Anano can play there as well. So we've got a bit of overlap there. When we move forward to the kind of wings on the right hand side, we've got Paul Pons, who doesn't look amazing anymore. But he's worth 1.7 million. I think he won like the Oceanic Player of the Year award recently. Um, 30 odd caps. He's actually been in the national side for a while. But I know he can do the business. I know he's good on that wing. Uh, but we've got Giles Riviera, who will probably start instead. Play for the humpbacks. He looks a bit better, especially, you know, with the kind of dribbling um, attribute when you compare across the Paul Ponds, I think. Oh, no, they're about the same. But he looks, generally looks better. On the left, we've got Quentin Beauvalet, who used to play for us at the humpbacks. Now it's the eels. He's decent. And then... Where is he? Moses Dalloway, who again will probably be our starting player. Six foot four. Bit of a giant. But he looks really good. Hugs the line as well, which is a nice player trait to have. In the centre, we've got Patrice David, who I showed you before. Uh, Emmerich De Freitas, who'll be more of a kind of holding, ball winning midfielder if we need him. Alexander Roger, who's just really good. Playing for the Humpbacks. And. Well, he's snuck all the way up here. Johan Andre, 3.2 million, the most valuable player from the Polynesian chain of islands. Not just for us, for all of them. Six foot, 22, 40 odd caps. Better in that kind of whole position, but actually we played him in midfield. He was amazing for us at the humpbacks. Oh, and also we've got Caron as well, who can play on the right hand side if we need him to. I think that's it for the midfield generally. So we can get on to the strikers. We've got Caron, that I just showed you there. Um, he looks good up front. 23 caps, 5 goals. Though. Not a huge goal scoring record, but then he's probably not being played properly. Uh, Yannick Janin, so we brought him back. The man, the legend, he's 29. 24 caps, 9 goals. He had not seen the national side for some time now. And he, if we look at his record, he's good. This is just the league goals, remember. Ignore the cup goals. You've got to click on the team to actually see that. But he's not had a prolific season since about 27, 28. Um, but we know what he can do. We've got Gerard as well. Gerard wasn't even in the national pool. I had to add him to the national pool. 29 as well. Attribute wise, isn't looking amazing anymore. But again, we know he can do the business. You know he's got it under control. Only three caps and one goal ever. I want to take this man to the World Cup. He's got to come to the World Cup. We've got to get there first, but he's coming. And then we've got Claude Borain, who looks amazing as well. 20 years old. He's going to be a star. Six foot two. Look at the spread of attributes for a 20 year old in, at this level. At this level. So I think he's from the um, Nihisha Island kind of youth system. 21 caps, 9 goals, decent record because he's been in and out of the under-23 step until he got to the hump packs. I would buy him in a heartbeat for any of the sides on this. So there we go, and we're going to play the hoofball tactics I think I've mentioned in the last video. We're going to go for that kind of right of the week. The hoofball tactic we've got is pretty attacking anyway, but it should work reasonably well against some of the bigger sides. So let's see what they say. Let's see if we get any good uh, news items. So we're defending the World Cup qual. So Tahiti won them the last time this happened, so about four years ago. Um, done brilliantly. One of the biggest. It really is one of the biggest. Yeah, we've made big changes. So I'm not going to say otherwise. We have made huge changes. Put them on the back foot. I see Gidas Kagup. He's really good. We'd, he'd get into our side. He is good. Um, I don't want to talk about him. Oh, and there we go. That's that's us done. Kalai isn't playing for two Mercy Islands. He didn't get a call up, which is good for us at so many different levels. Okay, you and Andrew mustn't be complacent. Yeah, I'll be fine. Oh, that's where he's gone. So Gidas Kagup, who used to play over in Polynesia, has gone off and gone off to Melbourne Victory. So right, he's got a really good record too. I don't, now he's gone, I don't think he'll come back because the, the squad's too good. 22 degrees, that'll be fine. Bruce is happy, blah, blah. 
I wonder which one's going to try and make us play. Eighth. We've got two. That's at three o'clock. Oh, it's in the evening. So we're going to play our match, our domestic match, and then I'm assuming fly over to the mainland. That we're probably not going to make it in time. I'm just going to assume my assistant manager is taking control of the match. Um, so I'm going to have to do a quick edit. I, no, no, I'm not. It's at least the next day. Never mind. Ignore all that. We'll be flying back for that match. Hopefully triumphantly. Against two Mertis Islands. Let's have a look at their squad. Generally, you've got Tapas Jack, one of my favourite players, just because of his name. Tapas is not a first name I ever thought I'd see. In terms of who they've got, they've not got anyone from our current Tertengegi wing side. Um, they've got a few players like Get Up. This Caro Minan, we once tried to get. Fred Poznan, we tried to get, who's quite good. Um, Minan's pretty. Pretty common name. Kilau Kawik used to play for us when we were at the Humpbacks, I think. Uh, but never quite made it into the squad. So yeah. Some good players, but we are strong. Oh yeah, Malcolm Asia as well. Pretty good. Let's see how we do. 13,000 tickets sold out. There's 20,000 capacity, so it should be a good match. Uh, let's put the squad together. So Rousset's going to start on the right. It looks like it's going to be Jean Christie, Christophe Hummer on the left. Dupuis, Stephen Thibault, center Luca Dennis, and Honor or Mara. Good. Mm. On a, they should be reasonably strong there. On the right hand side, we're going to have Charles Riviere starting. On the left, Moses Dalloin, centre. We're going to have Jan Andre and Alexander Rocher. Very attacking midfield with those two in there, I think. Pressing forward, let's get Bahrain on there. And target man. And then let's swap these two round. That's all right. Then let's fill the bench. Marchetti, Pui, David, Maro, Pons, Beverly, Ritas, Gerard, Caron. It's basically a full bench, isn't it? We're going to get to use all 12. Yeah, okay, all 12, that'll do us. Let's see how this goes. Stadium looks good, looks full. They've gone for a 4 2 3 1 wide. I think we can deal with that. I'm confident. This might be a bit tough to break through this kind of block here of four, but we've got Yan in. Yeah. Karen, where you left off. I have no idea what happened last time, but that only ever comes up if it was a good, good match. Win football. Get yeah, the result. Now we come. Playing in the Tahitian red and white. We are still wearing our Rura 2 colours. Apparently, one of the new FM20 features would be changing automatically. Can a club, you can wear the club colours, I think. I set it to club colours and that should change, I think. Um, so in the future, I won't be embarrassed by the fact I'm wearing the wrong colours and I'm too lazy to change them. Right, 10 minutes in, 70% possession. Nothing to show for it, though. I mean, we've got some shots, but no highlights to show for it. Okay, Tibber with the long throw, Roger. Andre. Have to go around the sides, I think. We're not going to get through the middle. Yannin, oh, Yannin wasn't quite there. Back in we go, go on, Riviere. Dallowin, tap in, ride the back. 
score them every day. We'll see the highlight, but nothing really special happened on there apart from that Dalloway drifted away. That's poor marking, really. Their right back just didn't follow him. Good for us. We're on our way. Dalloway, go short, Andre. Mao. Roger Ono. What a goal for the centre back, the no nonsense centre back. There's absolutely no nonsense about that shot. Looks like we're just lining him up then. There's a few different people who could have taken that shot and he went to the centre back. There we go. That's why we were paid to make these decisions. I think Ono might have been one of the players they were complaining about because they wanted um, Mason and Mason didn't get called up at all. Dalloway, Roger, oh. Riviera, Yanin. At least he got, yeah, he's got a shot on target now. Good clearance. Yanin yeah, doing the simple stuff well. Bahrain. What a header. Tenth goal as well. And we just need to carry on piling on the, the pressure now. See so if we can make this a record qualification. I'm really jealous of how much talent Tahiti societies have, which sounds weird because I'm managing them. I shouldn't be jealous because they're ours in that sense. But it's just there's a lot of really good Tahitian players, and if you're not a Tahitian club, then you need to be the humpbacks if you want to get them. Because no other clubs can really afford them or have the reputation for it. So it's basically Con Riviera, Yanin. How did he miss that? Yeah, that's your Huahin. Warrior or Taha. Maybe chance, you're not going to get them. Tipple in. Just bouncing around. Gerard's going to get to come on, I think. Probably going to bring Ono off at half time. Because he looks knackered. I'm a Riviera. Yeah, well offside. Stood there waiting for it. No, we don't need to see that again. We don't need to see that his positioning is poor. Right, it's going well. Very pleased. And then, Maro will have to come on for Ono. And let's bring on Gerard for Yannin. Give him a bit of a run in. I know it is just blatant favouritism, but they scored enough domestic goals that they should be in consideration. There are actually quite a lot of good strikers, so I guess if the other Tahitian managers have been playing a, a one up front system, there'd be less opportunities, a lot more competition. Here it goes. So close. 19 shots to their one. 10 on target, then none. Their expected goals must be pretty low for this one. Riviera, Bahrain, just so many people outside there. Probably would have been better if they just left Riviera's shot. No, it wasn't going on target anyway. Need to make some more subs. Let's take off Riviera and bring on Pons. Oops, that is not good. It's the longest highlight they've had. Up him. I thought it was in. That so looked like it was in. Should really check the rules before and see if away goals count. 
I have a feeling they wouldn't do in like a qualifier final, but I also didn't think we'd be playing a qualifying final over two legs, so you know. 22 shots to their two, they still not got anything to target. Roger, oof. Not bad. I'm hoping the team get more kind of familiar and used to the tactic and start performing a little bit better, because 3 0 is good. But it's not quite gelled the way it can do. But it's our first match with them. Yep, sensational. Riviera is involved in everything. So 3 0. They were all excellent. Excellent them on there. Got a good win. Let's not get away with ourselves. It was a good win. Easy win. Yeah. We have to say. Um, he was faultless. Two goals disallowed. No, if I if I speak, I'm in trouble. Right, we'll come back to that. But let's have a look at this. Let's see if we can see the rules for the. Oh. Really, every time I click, it's just going back. Top team qualifies for the finals. He's taken us back there, yeah. He does literally just say winners qualifies for the World Cup. Maybe we are just one match away from qualifying for the World Cup and there'll be no more playoffs. We'll see. Be back in just a second. Okay, so we're back for the second leg. We played the match in between. So I'm just imagining we flew back on a privately chartered jet. Um so we could beat I can't remember who it was, it was 2 0 in the um UC Trophy. Union Rimatara, yeah. Good good 2 0 thump. But here we are, we're going after the distant island stadium in Makema, which is part of the two Amotis Islands, the kind of exile islands off to the north. Let's see how we do. We've got they're playing in red and we're playing in white and red. We'll see. A lot of players quite tired. Let's make a few things. So Bovalet can start here. And De Freitas can start for Roger. Leave everything else the same there. De Freitas is that player I always tried to sign when I was at the humpbacks. He never wanted to talk to us. Never wanted to agree. And he kind of, well, first of all, he didn't want to talk terms and then we couldn't get him to agree terms because he's too expensive. 50th appearance for reset. Natural choice of captaincy. Yep. Um yeah we can never get him to agree and then the moment I left the humpbacks, then that's when they got him. I think he's moved on since but they managed to get him. So the distant island stadium not quite as fancy as the uh New Dawn View. Plus with the free kick. They got an early goal that would make things very tense, I think. Okay, Yan in. Got the pace. Overlay. Back across. One of you. Oh. Corner kick at least. They were kind of lining up for that one. Go on, Andre. Oh. I really want Yan in or Andre to score. It'd just be a nice, nice touch, unless they're going to save it up for the World Cup proper. I don't want to jinx it. But if we win overall, we might be going to the World Cup proper. I couldn't find any sign before the match of any other extra qualifying or playoff rounds. I think something may have changed. Oh, come on, Bahrain. What a rocket. We gave him too much space. And in it goes. Yeah, plenty of space. Just keep going back. It's too late then. Yes, yeah, so I can't see any sign of any playoffs. And I don't know if there was one, because I remember Marquesa or Tumertis or Bass Island. It was one of those three. Maybe it's the Bass Islands losing to Uruguay. I remember that definitely happened, but in the next World Cup, Tahiti went straight in. 
Dennis, Ono, he's on fire. He's already thanked me in the press once for after getting his debut goal for his country. Was it his debut goal or his first goal at the very least? And our left back praised us in the media as well for giving him his first cap. Winning over hearts and minds. We did have the kind of, before these matches, we had the team meeting. And I've got three options like, this is a chance for you to stake a, a claim for your place. Or I want the older heads to help the newer players. Or a lot of you in your going Bahrain. Yanin, there we go. He's got it. Tenth goal. It's taken him for a long... If we'd been the manager of Tahiti a long time ago, he would have not had to wait this long for a tenth goal. Bahrain puts it across the face of goal. And that, that right there where Yanin scored from, is one of the expected goal sweet spots. And on shot target in that area, it's got about a 35% chance of going in. Or oh, Yanin again, making a keeper stretch. Uh, yeah, so we've got three choices. One was get the experienced heads to help out. And the other one was a lot of you knew, so this is your opportunity to cement a claim or whatever. Some kind of variant of that. And basically, no matter what I'd have chosen, I would have irritated half the team. So I said, this is your chance to kind of cement place. And then all the older players were like, we don't think some of these young ones are good enough. Um, a bit awkward. Oh, oh no, what's this? Red for Jean-Christophe Hamar? That didn't even look like anything. Right, Yannin's going to have to come off to rest him. He's got his goal now. Bryce Rush can go on. Bahrain can stay as the target man. There we go. We, this will be fine. We've only got an entire half of a match to play. We are, you know, six goals ahead on aggregate. There's no tension in this match, is there? None. Just the anticipation of getting that news item at the end that says we've actually qualified. Right, now we're at half, half time. Breezy 32 with rain. Definite rain. It's going to be muggy. Very pleased. I, don't, I know I should say don't get complacent, but I am genuinely quite pleased with this. Well, they brought Tapas Jack on. Serving small dishes and finger food. Ten thousand people here at the distant island stadium. I think that's a capacity crowd. The Two Merton National Stadium. Their players are pretty fired up. Let's let's shout something. Get creative. Inspired, pressured. Okay. Right, let's bring on Gerard for Bahrain and Pons again for Riviera. Basically, just favouring the ones we know, giving him a few extra caps as a favour. Tafrita has been pretty anonymous in this match. He might have been a mistake to call up. Nothing particularly special going on. He's about 29. So he should be in his prime, really. Oh, it looked like I was going to be a bit of a rocket as well, but no. Tibalt. Bovale. Oh, Gerard. Who got that one? Okay, yeah, own goal. I think that's fair. It was, that confu it was so confusing that I think an own goal is fair from that one. Gerard wasn't lively enough to score it there. Just kind of misses, bounces. You forgot, yeah. I think it might have been Gerard if Fostan got there right at the end to sky it even further into his own net. Long ball by Rush. Does it go anywhere? Must be their highlight. Apalga. Again, he looked like he was shaping a decent shot on target, but he was definitely not on target by the end. Not dominating as much in the possession and the shots, but we are a player down. Come on. 7 0 is a decent aggregate score. He 
Yeah, definitely music to our ears. We've we've won it. So I think we we've got oh yeah, we've got a little cup for it. Even though it's a qualifier, I look really short compared to all the other players. Okay, there we go. We'll we'll add that weird trophy to our uh, cabinet. Well then, everyone, we're pleased. Right, so consecutive World Cup qualifier wins. We've gone up to 101st. We've almost broken into the top 100. Who else is around us? Look at Zimbabwe, the Gambia. Cyprus, Montenegro. New Zealand. Okay. We're a little way off. Any really kind of big teams? Yeah, never mind. But that is definitely an improvement. Yep, there we go. We've won. Decent. We'll come back to this. We've qualified for the World Cup. So this, that sounds pretty clear to me. We're in the World Cup. Just double check. So. This should be a list of all the teams qualified. And there we are. We're in there too. Okay, Spain, Brazil, United States, Mexico, Costa Rica, Argentina, China, South Korea, Japan, Australia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Haiti, uh, El Salvador, Jamaica, Colombia, Iraq, Uzbekistan, us, and Uruguay. Uzbekistan are what? 60th? Okay. Um, Iraq will be quite high. 59th? Okay, I don't know what I'm saying. El Salvador, 68th. 80? 73rd, that's a lot higher than I thought they would be. Um, interesting. So yeah, I think we're still uh, the lowest ranked in there. Costa Rica will be quite high. 32nd, yeah. So there we go. We're going to Spain um, in the summer, in June. So we've basically got the rest of the season to play. Let's schedule some friendly, shall we? So if you've got June... multiple friendly matches let's do two in June one in November yeah we'll do that so we want to try some bigger sides let's try Congo try Mm. Or higher. Albania. Let's try Saudi Arabia as well, because they're in the World Cup. Oh, it looks like none of them want to come and play us. Away. That's fine, we'll go away. Get used to it. So, thanks very much for watching that. We've made it to the World Cup. Um, we have an opportunity to try and do something in the World Cup. If we look at the, the history for TT, the last time they're in a World Cup. Oh. Two games, because they're three team groups, um, apparently now. Drew with England, I remember watching that one. That was very, I mean, they held on. But that's a really good result. We'll struggle to beat that and then thrash by Senegal. But we'll see how we do. Got some history to potentially make. TT haven't scored a goal in the World Cup, so that'll be something we can try and uh, manage. Uh, they've not won a game and they've only got one point. And their goal difference is minus three. So there's a lot of things we can improve on. Um, we've got a few friendlies, hopefully, where we'll tweak the team just a little bit, just a tad, to see whether we can squeeze something out. But um, I think we'll have some interesting games. We'll definitely have that. So, yeah, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode where we'll return with our kind of 
um, domestic matches again to see if we can get into the O-League. Thank you. 